Hello, I'm Natasha Coyle and welcome back to another episode of The Rest is Rugby, the latest video series by Glasgow Warriors that looks at the off-field stories of our staff, players and community. A new initiative we introduced last year and we are doing this year is our Fighting for Our Families campaign, which is raising money for the Glasgow Children's Hospital charity. My guest on today's episode of The Rest is Rugby is a woman who absolutely helped us smash our target by helping to donate over £10,000 to our overall target of £53,000. Welcome to the show, Kimberly Guffey from our Jocelyn Ackies. Thank you for having me. So, Kimberly, could you tell me more about our Jocelyn Ackies and your role within the club? Yeah, so at Rossnackies, we are a small rugby team down in the southwest of Scotland, um, who were also the West Division one winners this season as well. So that was great for Ackies. Um, my role within Adros Nackies is basically um, a co- volunteer coordinator. So I rally the troops up or more into bullying them into <laughs> to getting involved in the club and finding people that are willing to obviously help us build on our community, which is something that we've been doing in the last year or so. You have a son who also plays for Aldross and Ackies. Can you tell me about what rugby means to him specifically, you, and also what you're like on the sidelines cheering him on? <laughs> okay, so yes, I have a son, Nathan, who is playing, he'll go into the under 15s, under 14s, under 15s team this year. Um, and rugby is just his world. I think at that age, rugby is any young boy, if they play rugby, it becomes their world at that age. It's youth rugby um, and they live it and they breathe it. So he thoroughly enjoys it. Um, it's a big part of our family now, rugby. Um, we spend a lot of time down at the club. We spend a lot of time at the side of a pitch. We spend a lot of time coming up to Warriors. Um, it's definitely a, a sport that brings families together more than just on the pitch, but off the pitch also. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. And the Fighting for Our Families campaign stemmed from bringing communities and families together, not just for the Glasgow Children's Hospital charity, but for everybody else Mm -hmm. in our community. So let's talk about that. You were one of the many clubs that got involved, but you didn't just get involved. You got stuck in. Can you tell me a bit about why you thought you were really going to take on the challenge last year? So it was funny because it was social media that um, drew my attention to what Glasgow Warriors were were doing. Um, I had seen the post um, and I thought, you know what, that's just going to be a really good idea. As I say, our club itself is working hard to work with the community and become a club, a family more. Um, they're, They're trying to draw more people into the clubhouse as well as to the side of the pitches and supporting. So if we can do something that was of a worthy cause that that was helping um then we wanted to take part so i took it i read it messaged the the club president like check this out we can get involved in this um and you know it's only when you start to look into it that you see um families round about you actually have had so much support from this charity alone um so it it was straight there it was like a no-brainer that we were just going to going to sign up and take it on as a challenge and that's what it was as well it was a bit of a challenge for us so well you did car washes sponsored walks but a lot of the ideas came from the kids didn't they yeah absolutely so um what i what i initially done is i said i took it to the president of the club and says look i'm going to run with this let me get in contact with all the coaches of all age groups because the only way to get everyone completely involved is it's you can do one event and you can you can draw so many people in at a time but if you do lots of events, then you can draw, not only raise a lot of money, but you can draw everyone in and there's something there that everyone can do because we had sponsored cycles, but some kids are just maybe a wee bit too young to cycle around an island or um, we, you know, car washes is great, but you know, not everyone wants to, to join in and get involved in a car wash. You can't have, you can only have so many bodies around a car anyway at a time. So um, what we did was we said, look, what do you want to do? We made it a little bit of an in-house competition. So each team came up with their own ideas and yeah, they thoroughly they thoroughly enjoyed coming up with their ideas, the kids themselves, putting it into practice and raising the money. And we just kind of 
questioned who might raise the most money and every kid the obviously the competitiveness of the rugby world came out and we're like yeah it's going to be us it's going to be us so um that helped obviously increase the money that we raised so absolutely you mentioned there was something for everybody and i think rugby union particularly there is a position on the pitch for everybody regardless of what you look like regardless of your background and offering and getting the kids and the parents involved and getting them to drive the ideas as well brings everybody together and gives an opportunity for everybody to get stuck in yeah we often look for for ways to draw everyone in from not just the players in the pitch because we start at micros and minis and it's great because at that age you know it's like a big game of tig and the kids really want to be involved and you get all ages um, you have boys, you have girls on the pitch. We do our, our touch in a Friday night as a club, so all the families are involved. So it's just finding that way where on the pitch but off the pitch that we can say to these mums and dads that would normally drop the kids and run, um, come just stay and we'll, you know, we'll find somewhere for you to fit into our, our rugby club and, and into our community. You definitely have been a facilitator of that for sure and <laughs> the community feel that i have experienced at aldrosson if i haven't come down maybe i shouldn't be saying this on camera but i had a bit of a hiccup when i went down oh. to aldrosson and we were filming something for our awards dinner which you were a part of kimberly and um the tripod um had a slight injury that's probably the best way to put it um that and the itself tash was m you couldn't have made it up Tash comes down to address Nackies. I'm just going to tell the story. You, here. you tell the story. Yeah. So Tash comes down to address Nackies. Is it okay if we come down and film Kimberly? Absolutely. So Tash rocks down. We, we get introduced ourselves to each other. And um, Cameron had to give Tash a brand new iPod. Um, uh, sorry, iPod. Um, tripod. A brand new tripod. And she goes to set up and she snaps it. <laughs> and we're all just like, uh, what are we gonna do here? Fully exposed me. Trying there. to have each other's back. We're black, t and I was like, "I'll get his tape. I'll." I saw right. I'll jump up the road. I'll get his tape. I only live two minutes from the club. I go outside. My car has a completely flat tire. Like, it, it was just like a nightmare. Like one thing had gone. Yeah, a, a, an a injury serious, had occurred yeah. at the rugby club. Okay, it was an injury that had rehabilitation was going to be fixed, but. A further injury occurred to a different object but yeah you had the flat yeah. tire please we carry had the on. flat tire so it was one of those panic stations where a series of unfortunate events a series of unfortunate so, events so we <laughs> we end up a phone um one of the dads from my team so this is where the community really works i think absolutely so a phone a dad from my team he's like he's i know he's a cameraman he comes down he, he doesn't brings... bring just one tripod, no. though. <laughs> he brings two of different sizes with a full light setup, which he can change the lights all on his phone. And I thought, blimey, what <laughs> what a great yeah. guy. Struan's a great guy. He yeah. does. And so. then you had your someone else come down to help fix your tyre, yeah. change your tyre. And you had Alan Rice, who was running around trying to find black tape for us yeah. to uh, help rehabilitate the injury. So um, it, w it was it was the rugby tape out the cupboard that saved the day on the, on the tripod. So it was, um, yeah, rug rugby wins eh? <laughs> every time. The community that is cultivated was just like a snapshot in that moment yes, for me. it was, absolutely. Um, it just shows how easy the community, when you work together, you know, it works. It works for us at Adrosin. It it works. I'm sure it works here at at your club as well at Glasgow Warriors. So, um, it's building on it. It's building on the people round about us like you are here. Let's talk more about um your volunteering and help you helping to facilitate what goes on at your club. What has been beyond Plaster It Purple, but also Plaster It Purple and Fighting for Our Families campaign. What has been some of your favourite moments from being at Ardross and Aki's? Uh, do you know, I thoroughly enjoy when the, the kids, you know, it used to be that we had we end of season awards for the kids and it was just a case of every team took their medals and they'd, after a training session, they would, they would get, they would say player of the year, you know, sports of the year, most improved. Now we make it a full event for the kids. We have inflatables, we have the barbecues burning, we have everyone together. And I thoroughly enjoy, I thoroughly enjoy the day. 
Um, I do run about like a headless chicken most of the day, but I do I enjoy seeing everybody together and everyone smiling and having having fun. You know, we've, we've got them out in the pitch with rugby balls, dads that would never even look at a rugby ball, mums that don't even know the shape of a rugby ball, but they get involved and and they thoroughly enjoy it. So that's probably one of my favourite days of the year down at Adrossen. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed with the plaster at purple, um, Jack Anderson shaving his head. That was a good one for me. Um, took absolute pleasure in, in taking that, in mullet, taking off. that mullet off. Um, and my, uh, the other event that I thoroughly enjoyed was we, we hosted our own um, bouncing bingo night um, where parents everyone was up tables dancing singing along to the same songs and thoroughly enjoying it so yeah we have we've had some good events down there um we're going to try and run with more this year so there'll be lots more memories to make um for us down there this year too that's a great line it's about memories to make and cultivating that yeah. community and all drosnackies is one of the many, many clubs that is encompassed within Glasgow, Caledonia in the west of Scotland that provides that community and that engagement for so many people who are initially interested in rugby, but it's also just about bringing people together. Why don't we end on talking about fighting for our families? And you really obviously got stuck in this year. You also have a lot of plans to get stuck in. This year, I know you're self safeguarding <laughs> some of your ideas, safeguarding them. Um, but for anyone who's watching this, who's thinking, I would love to do something like that. I would love to get stuck in, but I'm not really sure how to, or um, I don't know how to go about doing that. What would your advice be to those people? I would say to every team out there, every every team in Scotland, right across the board, it doesn't have to be the west of Scotland or whatever. If you want to get involved, um, definitely do it. Get in touch with Glasgow Warriors. Um, it has been a fantastic thing for our, our club, definitely. Um, and we can't wait to get involved again. We're super excited about it. Get in touch with myself. I'm happy to, to, to give you some advice, but I won't be giving you my ideas um, for next year. Um, we are really looking forward to getting involved. We do have plans. Well, the cl I've not it's under the hat, but... We, we've got our, our ideas of how we plan to fundraise this year. Um, we hope to even involve some other clubs as well. So expect to hear from me. <laughs> um, watch and, this space. Yeah, watch this space. As Tash would say, watch this space. Um, and, and, and don't think on it. Just do it. Just do it. It's for a fantastic charity. Um, and there couldn't be a better charity out there. What we found was that actually, if you get talking to the people in your club, there are so many people that have actually been helped by this charity. Um, we had parents approach, I had parents approach myself and they were saying how, you know, their child from that rugby pitch out there, they're pointing their kid out and saying, Do you know, this charity really did help our child, my child um, in a time of need. And you would never have known it until these people start speaking up. So. Yeah, just get involved um, and give it a bash. It's not really so much about raising how much you can raise. It is great that you, if you can raise a lot of money, but getting involved is so much more important and has been so much more important for our team and our club. So That's all we've got time for on today's episode of The Rest is Rugby. Our 2024-25 campaign to raise money for Glasgow Children's Hospital Charity is now open. So if you can, please give generously using the link in the description below. Thank you so much to Kimberly Guffey for coming on today's show. Loved it. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for coming on. Uh, that's all we've got time for. We'll be back with another episode very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>